Hello students, today we will be discussing about the next topic that is center of mass and its related things that is angular momentum, moment of inertia and so on. So first let's introduce the concept of center of mass. So when we talk about the center of mass, what basically does that imply? The name itself suggests that we will be referring to the mass center. That is, if you take any object and if you can find out the center, I'm not talking about the geometrical center, I'm talking about the center with respect to its mass. That is, how the masses have been distributed. So it may be possible that the geometrical center of the object may not coincide with the center of mass because center of mass is found with respect to the distribution of the masses about any particular point. Right? So let's say if we take if we take any arbitrary shaped object, let's say something like this. Here, let's assume that there are discrete masses within it. M1 here, M2 here, M3 here, M4 here. Okay? Now, obviously you have to associate at what positions these masses are. So let's do one thing. Let's take the coordinate axis. Let's say our coordinate axis is somewhat here. So, with respect to these coordinate axes, if I want to say that this is at a distance, let's say r1, this is unit vector r1, this is unit vector r2, this is unit vector r3, this is unit vector r4. Okay. So, all the unit vectors have been found with regard to the origin of the coordinate system, right? So let's say this is my origin of the coordinate system. Now, origin can be placed at the geometrical center. It is up to you that where exactly you place your coordinate system. So depending upon where exactly you place the origin of your coordinate system, the values of R1, R2, R3 and R4 are going to vary accordingly, right? But it may not necessarily mean that all the masses are symmetrically distributed about the origin. So, we are required to find out where exactly is the center of mass. Or in another way, we can put it this way, that the center of mass is basically a point wherein if you apply the force at that point, it is equivalent to saying that the force has been applied on the whole body. Because center of mass is the point where the whole mass of the body can be said to be concentrated. So the whole mass of the body can be said to be concentrated at the center of mass. So, it is equivalent to saying that the whole force has been applied on the object itself. So let's try to put it in, in mathematical terms. So if I say that the external force that has been applied, please mind you, I'm talking about an external force. So this, let's say, is the total mass of the object into the net acceleration of the object. Okay. Now, if I say this is equal to mass into acceleration, now what can I say further? I can say that this force can be redistributed across each of the masses. So I can simply say that M1, E1, this is the force acting on the mass M1. Then you have M2, E2, then M3, E3, plus M4, E4. Okay? So these are, this, these are the different forces that we have. So let me rewrite this. So if I rewrite this, so what will I get? I can write it this way that M into A, where M, capital M, basically stands for the total mass of the object, of the whole object. This will be equals to M1, A1, plus M2, A2, plus M3, A3. These are the individual forces, right? Now, if I say that I can write down the acceleration as equals to the change in velocity this time, so m into dv by dt. So this can be given by m1 dv1 by dt plus m2 dv2 by dt and so on. I'm not writing all the terms. Right? 
So if this is true at any particular time interval, so I can say that it should be true at all particular time intervals as well. Because here we are just referring to an arbitrary force. So if I integrate over the time interval, on both sides, I'm integrating over the time interval. So if I integrate over the time interval, so what will I get? Assuming that there was no initial value of velocity, I can safely say that this can be written as m into v, where v stands for the final velocity of our total mass. So this can be given by m1 v1, m2 v2, and so on. Clear? So these are what we have. Again, doing the same way, assuming that there was no initial velocity of the object integrating over time and so on, I can say that the total mass into the position of the center of mass, where the total mass can be said to be concentrated upon if I uh, represent that by r, obviously with regard to our origin that we have taken in. So m into r, so this will be equals to m1 r1 m2 r2 and so on. If you remember r1, r2, r3, these were the position vectors of the different masses. Therefore, what I get from this is this, that is the position vector of the center of mass can be given by m1 r1 plus m2 r2 and so on, multiplied by the total mass. The total mass can be given by m1 plus m2 and so on. So this is how we find out the position of the center of mass. Similarly, from this particular expression you can find out the center of mass velocity. From this expression you can find out the position, the acceleration of the center of mass. Right? So this is how we define the center of mass of the object. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense. Now in our next session, we'll be starting off with what is known as the rotation motion. Okay? Thank you then. On that note, I end it here.